Yes. Yes. What's good, people? <laughs> Welcome to the What Does Your Mum Think podcast. Be, 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 be. Live. We the- back. We back. We back. Episode six in the building, I think. Um, what's good, brother? I'm good, man. How you doing? Meeting energies today. Sadie is going to have some great energies as well when she joins. I am good, bro. Um, I'm a little bit sniffly. I'm not had a bad week, but I've had a heavy week. Um, and yeah, Listen, lad, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut the bullshit, right? So we're recording this. After, we've already done Sadie's thing, but we're recording this after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Only <laughs> the... Uh... set the record straight. <laughs> and basically, we, we were really low on energy and we recorded it really bad. So we just spoke to Sadie Clayton. Um, she's she's incredible, an incredible artist, yeah, she and she's brought so much energy, so much yeah. warmth to my life that I feel like we can redo <laughs> this part again now and make it ten times better. <laughs> so that's where we are. <laughs> yeah, so this might be a little harsh cut to when we say hello to Sadie shortly. Um, I, I love the transparency, Michael. Um, but yeah, so maybe, maybe this is the way we do it from now on. Do you know what I mean? We build off the energy of the guests we just had and do the introduction at the end, you know? That's it's kind of nice. I do feel... I feel, because um, we have context to what we're going to talk about. But anyway, it's a really good listen. We hope you enjoy it. Sade is an artist um, who specifically works with Copper. She's known as the Copper Queen. Um, and she does some amazing stuff. She do, she's worked with some um, amazing collabs. She's doing amazing things. Um, she's inspiring people. She's teaching. She's um, exuberant in her personality. And she's very colourful to say the least <laughs> you know and she's infectious with positivity like hence why we're Super. both smiling and like, <laughs> like this now right we were both just saying how ill we were before this like <laughs> you do you know that. and here we are <laughs> oh, let's go let's go <laughs> I was worried before this one because it is hard because it's like like you do these on a Sunday innit? and you want to bring the best energy you possibly can right and like I said I've been fucked all weekend um sniffly and that and whatever um and you're like, oh, God, you don't want to receive. But as soon as you, 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 you just, yeah, it's nice. It's good. It was really good. Um, but we didn't, obviously, now we've not had our little chin wag. So shall we just chat shit for five minutes? If, um, and then cut we can do, do it actually. Do you, know, do you know one thing that we need to start doing is, I think, in this section, I think we should just pull, like, a little bit of shit up that we've seen throughout the week. Um, All right. Yeah, man, let's do that. Yeah, let's what do shall it. we pull up, Michael? Let's <laughs> 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 no, I've, I've seen a little um, bottle of gin being knocking about this past week, <laughs> yeah. and I believe a little somebody, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that was my baby, you know. It's super cool to see it out in the world. Like I was scrolling on Dial Line on like Tuesday or something, and obviously I've seen projects that I've worked on out in the world before, but not to that capacity and not to that global um, scale. Um, and rolling through Dial Line, and then boom, like this bottle man I worked on. On this obviously with a team that turned up when I was there. This is my baby for like a year, like Jesus Christ. I and obviously we pulled an expert to craft up all the little the details, the word mark, the homestead, the rosette, everything, you know, and um the job itself, obviously throughout a year, like put I'm at Jesus Christ, the amount of times I pulled pushed them little bits of type around and you know, I mean, and played with the crafting of it, but I mean, yeah, I mean, the all over idea is like bringing back that warmth to Jim Beam. Throughout the years, they kind of, obviously we noticed, they just lost the ways and they just wanted to become more JD, more JD, more JD. So we obviously threw out, especially obviously the pot, the viz, everything, authentically brought it back to Jim Beam and celebrated what they're about, you know, the kind of like beautiful informalities, um, being passed around the table, passed through generations, celebrating that pureness of the white um and again it's that beautiful thing like we opened up the archives and looked at all the old beautiful embellishments and like do you know what i mean reappropriate some of the kind of pre-prohibition stamps and you know they all them lovely little doofers and that you know you can see that even though like that's like the fucking gracie lineage lad when the fucking walking out like all with the shoulders on each other <laughs> um but you can see it again it's like what that these are the labels throughout the years that are authentically Jim Beams, you know what I'm saying? Unmistakably. We love that shit, don't we? Strategy loves that shit. Sometimes we have to look backwards to move <laughs> forwards. <laughs> no, but this is it. Like, there's learnings there, do you know what I mean? That beautiful arc of the Jim Beam. Mm. The Jim Beam type has always been there, do you know, and that, that, that strongness of the, of the of the rosette and the pureness of the white label and, you know what I mean, the crafted mark, the, the again, then that James Beam distilling coal mark, we took off and used that elsewhere and 
the homestead that we we recrafted with life and with Andrew Homestead out in America and he crafted all like the generational things and the illustration for the bottle that we did and um like, I, I, really love, I love I love the little lad I love the little line. What's it what does it say underneath his signature? It's like if if it's not signed by me, it's not fucking legit. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, what's, yeah, what's yeah. the line on it? I, just have a, I can't actually remember. I've got a, I've got an old scam. I've got an, I've got an old scam here, um, which is crazy actually. Non genuine <laughs> non- without my yeah. signature. <laughs> yeah, non non genuine without my signature. That was an old scam from. Uh, well, obviously these have got like little black bits on there, but um, but yeah, man, team proper crazy. It's really cool to see it out there. Um, and that scale, you know what I mean? And the guys, obviously, I did, I, I did a bit of Christmas stuff as well, but I didn't really do much of the biz. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can see, obviously, the the the, the relationship between, obviously, the two, you know. Um, but, yeah, really cool, man. Really cool. Yeah, it must be cool to see you work on the die line. I think, like, that's, uh, I mean, in the world of packaging anywhere, like, that's, like, the, that's monumental, isn't it? Super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> that, that did not sound like it's that cool. <laughs> Obviously, it's super cool. I'm fucking excited to see it, and <clears throat> I actually went over to Turn of Upworth this week to see a few of the guys, um, and got to see one of the finished bottles in hand, um, and run my finger over the beautiful tactility <laughs> of the stocks and the the raised inks and the embossings and stuff like that. So yeah, really beautiful overall. Um, 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 yeah, buzzing to see you know, and the the, the team that I worked on was, was with it was, was sick, you know. What I mean, Miles Marshall, Matt Lurcock, obviously Tim and Strategy and Charlie and everyone, Amy Cabane, um, and everyone else who touched that when I've obviously not seen it and um, whatnot. But yeah, that's my baby right there, bro. <laughs> Learned a lot on that project. I had the ones. Um, I think what else, I'm trying to think what else I've seen this week. What's come out? I did see an ad. What mother did. For um, for slim oh, fast, shit. where they use big, We're big nasty. About this. I don't like it, lad. I'm not gonna lie. I think um, <clears throat> I think I've seen it from a lot from ad agencies recently. Um, Uncommon do it a lot, and I think Uncommon is sick, bro. Like fucking hell, you know what I mean? Throughout um, throughout the advertising world, every piece of work that I see, what they do, like it's it's like a smile in the mind piece of work. You know what I mean? There's doesn't feel like there's any fillers. Like everything they put out there is a killer. Like whether it's the British Airways stuff that they did, um, uh, to the EA Sports stuff that they just did, pulling Dave in and stuff and whatever mm. else. But that's my point, right? Right, pulling pulling Dave in to that kind of feels kind of feels right. The attitude's right, you know what I mean. The fucking the energy's right. I don't know. He, I know he loves sport and football. He done like loads of like six Stone Island collabs. We like. Um, football t-shirts and six so there's there's a nice crossover but then you get this fucking one that mother's just done yeah it's an ad for slim fast and they've just pulled big nasty in and they've done it on a and don't get it twisted yeah it's cool but i just feel like i've seen the like dwe was pulled in for the christmas IKEA. ad and it was like yeah the, the ikea christmas ad, and it was like right we've got dwe and like this is sick and even me as a grime um, a grime head from day you know what I mean I see it and I'm like yeah this is sick bro like I mean Nana's gonna be singing DWE at Christmas you know like this is sick did it? but about that and like that's super cool and authentic <laughs> and real you know and I thought I thought that was a really beautiful take and it felt fresh and uh, and, and whatnot and now I see Slim Fast doing it and I think what we're doing here now then like what we're doing are we just getting cool people in to make a, a very mundane product better but it is you wanna watch or, it I, I don't understand what the yeah, pull it up, pull it up. We'll probably get pulled for having this on, though. We'll probably only be able to play a little bit of it. I'm not, not saying exactly it's not slimmer good. of the year either, is he? Well, I think that's the fucking idea, obviously, isn't it? You know what I mean? He looks like a fucking bottle of Slim Fast with his, what he's wearing, I guess. Like Steve the Madman, do you know what I mean? Just feel like they're pulling in. And I guess that's the briefing. How do you make it cool? How do you make it adapt yeah. to someone like us? You know what I mean? Or whatever, or fucking a younger generation. It's like three, four minutes long, lad. I pause it there, lad. I'm not saying it's not good. I- I'm not saying I, it's not good. I don't I'm think it saying. is for us. Like, I, 
I think it's for you know people that do that that are watching TV and that they're going to see that in between. They're going to see that commercial in between watching TV. I think it's it's more for the everyday person, like like what Danny was talking about with um like when he's thinking about an ad, he thinks like his mom's going to see it and making it for the everyday person, and like I think that's why it doesn't reach to us, even though you feel like it should do because it's big nasty or it's Dave. I think it's got a different spin on it. Yeah, like I said, it's not. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. Um, it's not good. I'm just saying it's not. It's not cool. <laughs> it's yeah, not yeah cool. it's not. It doesn't <laughs> feel cool. It doesn't feel cool. Like when I see it, it does, and I watched it. But it does to the people watching it. That's the thing. It's like when when maybe. when maybe when does, Big like, Nasty was on was on Channel Four. Do Channel you know what I mean? Four, like yeah. he's. Yeah, he, he's just I getting used so. and abused. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? He's he's got that character, and he's he's in a place where nobody should be talking like that. Nobody should be behaving like that, and that's why everybody loves him. Do you know what I mean? In that setting, and I think it's the same with Slim Fast. I think that's why it works for that yeah. group of people. But obviously, for us, we're like it's cringy to watch. <laughs> it is a little bit. It just made me feel yeah. That I think that, that was it. Like when I watched it the other day, I just wasn't. Um, it just felt like I've just seen it a lot now. It's becoming a bit of a trend. Let's just get someone cool to kind of, you know what I mean, or whatever, or who's deemed as cool by one generation to bring it to another generation if you want to look at it like that, to make that generation feel that they're in with it because, you know, whatever the fuck it is, you know, like, um, but it's, yeah, I guess it's advertising, isn't it, you know? Yeah, but it, like I said, it's, it's aimed at normies. <laughs> normies. No offense. <laughs> Fucking. <man. laughs> um, and then yeah. So without further ado, there's our little two cents. <laughs> um, here's Sadie. Enjoy the podcast, and we'll see you soon. Hello, morning, Sadie. What's How going on? Hey. Yeah, we're sweet Sadie. Say no more. Well, welcome to the What Does Your Mom Think podcast. Thanks Thank you for very much for doing this. This is so exciting. This is sick. Um, Michael, meet Sadie. Sadie, meet Michael. Hey, Sadie, it's Michael. lovely to meet you. How yeah. you doing? I'm good. You all right on this lovely sunny Sunday? I'm all right, love. I I love the northern <laughs> energy that you bring. <laughs> I love it so much. It kills me. I love it. Oh, I've been here watching... for 13 years. You won't believe it. I was watching the video the other day where you draw in the Picasso fe- the Picasso face, and you go and you say face like proper nose, and I'm like, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I love it. Oh, that was on the uh, CBBC show. Yeah, that's hilarious. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I'm watching that, and I was like, oh, God, I sound so northern. But anyway, I don't care. I don't want to change my accent. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Yeah, straight up. You know, I think so many like... people do try, you know, to kind of sound more posh or, you know, sound more articulate. But actually, I am my authentic self. Like, this is my authentic version of me. So I think I need to, yeah, remain that way. Tell them, Sadie. Well, that's a lovely, <laughs> that's a lovely transition. So we could, so obviously, we um, we usually always take it back to the beginning, innit? do you know what I mean? And see what the kind of like influences, catalysts was to like get into where you are now. And obviously, you're doing some really cool stuff. So we try to section and chronologically, in a way, <laughs> play yeah. out the stuff we're going to go through today. But it'd be great to just take it back to the ends of Yorkshire and what inspired you straight up to get to to become where you are now today yeah you know I mean? do you know what this is a question that I get asked all the time like even for example last night we were out at this jazz festival and a couple were opposite and she was like oh you're so colorful you're so confident you're so bold you know have you always been like that and I thought to myself yes actually I have like I've always been since a kid you know really kind of curious really fascinated really intrigued by everything and I think that's what's shaped who I am today like shape form structure color you know Mm -hmm. print travel culture everything I'm just so constantly inspired constantly searching um you know for like the next best thing so Mm -hmm. when I were a kid you know being mixed race half Jamaican half white British growing up in a very white area I never really fitted in. Like, there were no sort of books for me. All the girls I went to school with, all white girls had long straight hair. Went over to my dad, my parents are split. So went over to my dad's at the weekend. All the black girls, like they don't talk like me. They don't look like me. I didn't fit in with them. So mum were like, you know, why are you trying to fit in one or the other? Like just embrace it, be yourself. Like you're already different, just embrace that. Mm-hmm. And that must have been at the age of 13, 
Um, and I just went wild from there. You know, I sort of went to all the vintage shops, went to charity shops that are playing around with colour and textures and prints and fabrics. That's when I realised that I'd, you know, I needed to be in the creative world. And the first instance was fashion. And that's why I moved to London. And I've just never looked back, you know, and even today, like, you know, going back to the couple we met last night, she's like, you know, I'm so beige. I could only ever wear beige or black. <laughs> and I was like, well, to be fair, that's the majority of the world. Like, you know, most people do feel comfortable in something that doesn't make them stand out. But I'm the complete opposite. Like, you would never really find me wearing a black outfit. Like, it's just, yeah, not really in my wardrobe. <laughs> I should have worn more colour today, you know, I'm fully black. <laughs> yeah, now. me too. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been there with all the I should have worn, you know. Um, it's yeah, always the safe option, you... isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. I do oh, like yeah. peacocking, though. I'm not going to lie. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather, you know, instead of blending in, I would rather stand out. I'm um, going to say, Christian, I've seen you push a look with your leopard print <laughs> <laughs> um, but wait, so, so with that back in the day, did, did you do college and uni and stuff like that throughout the journey? And did you go through like um, processes there to help get you to where you are now? Did you have like a certain tutor or anything like that help? You know, or was it all yeah, kind of so, like self? So, um, yeah. So luckily enough, when I was a teen, you know, at school, when you've got to like pick your GCSEs. I, I sort of knew that I wanted to be in the creative industry, so I didn't go and do A levels. You know, I, I went straight and did a B-Tech in fashion and clothing. And it's the best thing I ever did because, I, you know, I was really able to explore nice. fabrics and the cutting side yeah. and the practical side. Obviously, I had to do my fashion history and theory or the writing side of it. But, you know, it really kind of plunged me straight into that fashion world. And then I did a foundation, which is a year course. Um, but I specialised in ceramics, actually. And nice. I did, you know, kind of a bit of illustration. You do a bit of, you know, a bit of everything. But I did ceramics. And I loved that. But it made me realise, actually, no, it's not really for me. I still love it. And I've got loads of it in the house. But I'm mm -hmm. definitely not a ceramicist. Like, I have no patience for that. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. then that's when I was like, OK, I don't want to do ceramics. I may, you know, definitely want to do fashion. So I went to Kingston Uni um, and did my fashion degree for three years. But even then... First year were major, able to be really explorative, you know, creating major pieces. And second year were really commercial, which I get. And Kingston's a very reputable course. You know, it's it's known for, um, you know, amazing graduates that go on, on into industry. But for me personally, I just couldn't gel with it. I didn't understand why I were designing these commercial pieces for like the brands like, yeah. I don't know, Old Navy, H&M, etc. Mm -hmm. So um, that's when I started interning. So I interned at Nick Knight, Gareth Pugh, Una Burke, and I went, you know, we're going to Fashion Week and I was just getting seen. And then when it came to final year, when you do your final major project, I created these copper metal sculptures for the body that no one had ever done before in the industry. You'd always seen gold and silver and brass, but you'd never seen copper. So I think that combination of having these things that you'd never seen before in fashion, all my networking that I did in, in, that I did in second year, bringing those two together when I then graduated it just I kind of it just sort of blew up um and kind of the rest is history like everything's just sort of you know snowballed and I've always sort of fused fashion art and tech and that's kind of my life now you yeah. know I do a bit of all three so, yeah. that's what I found really fascinating Sadie is that I'm always thinking okay I need to laser in and, and zone in more and just focus on design like I'm, I'm I'm like all over the place. I love so many different things. Um, I, oh my God. I, I, I wish there were 10 versions of me so I could do all these different things. So I could yeah. be a professional runner, professional MMA fighter. Uh, <laughs> what else would I be? I'd be a painter, I'd be a photographer. I'd be I'd just a graphic designer, which I am doing. But I get, sometimes I get so lost in all these different things and I'm like, okay, just, just, right, just fucking just focus on one. Just, just do one thing. But what, yeah. what I love to see yeah, about yourself is that, yeah, you, you, like you just said, you mix across these like three different areas and, mm -hmm. and, and blend even more into those. Like, how does that make you feel? Because as you said before, you, when someone's asking you, it's like you can't put yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that make you feel about being so open and being so, yeah, so open to, to so many different things? Yeah, totally. Well, it's funny because I also teach. I'm a BA fashion design uh, program director at university and often when I'm teaching like I, I teach fashion design but 
also teach professional practice and you know kind of getting the students industry ready and often I, I say to them right you've got to do your elevator pitch if you met if you met an investor in a lift you've got 30 seconds you know how would you introduce yourself what would you say you are and I've had to think about this as well as a professional and industry practitioner because yeah I trained in fashion design but now I make public sculptures for the art world but I've also got a few tv shows I'm also an educator so what I've realized is that actually I'm that broad and I like being that broad. I like being able to mm -hmm. turn my head to different things. But um, I now call myself a creator and innovator. And that nice. seems to, you know, <laughs> it seems to work. And then people often say, okay, well, what's your latest project? Or, you know, what is it that you, that you'd look at? What's like your perfect collaboration or your perfect dream job? So I think often it's quite nice not to pigeonhole because then I think, mm -hmm then subconsciously you're thinking oh but it's, I should really be doing that or maybe I should do more of this to make sure that I stay on that one channel but you don't need to I think if I think it's actually quite amazing that you've got a lot of different interests because then you know you're more interesting you're more inspired and more things mm -hmm. can kind of you know more opportunities can arise and that's what I found through my career you know one minute I'm mm -hmm. working with robots which AI is a whole other conversation just now. And then the next minute, you know, I'm I'm presenting a children's TV show. You know, it's yeah, it I think but that's what that's what gets me out of bed. Like I love I love yeah. not knowing what's gonna be in my inbox on a morning. Like, you know, I can just scroll and so oh cool. I've got a new email to go and do a project in Miami or, you know, up north or whatever. That's that's exciting for me. Yeah, that is awesome. And it, it's similar to what we're kind of talking about recently, isn't it, Michael, with the kind of way we attract work to us. Like, you almost put out your personality and your personality gets seen <clears throat> throughout the shows and stuff like that. And then naturally, in a way, serendipitously as well, you're going to be presented with opportunities that are tailored in a way for you, right? And me yes. and Michael is saying the same thing. It's like, trying to create work. Liam was saying the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? All the extra curricular stuff Liam does. You've it's got like, to. yeah, doing the work you want to do, putting that out there. Like, like Michael's just done a run and it's not necessarily design related, but yeah. you know what I mean? He's posted it everywhere and it's like, there could be a project two, three weeks or three months or three years down the line that a client or a, an agency remembers, oh, Michael's into his running. We've yes. got this electrolyte drinking. That's perfect. And You've it got kind it. of, yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. So I think there is something beautiful about that. I mean, throughout design, like especially at the start of your career, you end up doing a lot of stuff that necessarily wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily pick to do, I guess, in a way, not in a negative way, but yeah. just some kind of like big mainstream corporate brands that you end but up you've working got to on the experience. That somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to do your bits, don't get twisted, and there's learnings regardless, but. We're, we're definitely at a point in our career now and what we can say from what you say, what you're saying now is just tailoring what we do more specifically towards, yeah. you know, mm. and having yeah, them conversations. Totally. totally. Um, you know, I do get presented from a fashion perspective. I get a few brands, you know, asking me to, um, I'm not an influencer by any stretch, stretch. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, I, I, sort of, I, I get brands, you know, contacting me to kind of, you know, promote their company. Yeah, and there's some that yeah. I don't align with, like ethically. So therefore, you know, I've got to refuse that. And then there's other things that maybe I would like to be paid for to do because it's cool. But then I know that I'll do it anyway because actually it's great to be connected with them and it's good for my art presence. You know, so, yeah, yeah it, it, like you said, you, you can tailor the projects that you work on. But in terms of monetary terms, you know, you've got to think about that. Like, you know, are you going to get opportunity if you're not going to get the money? That's kind of more important than the money. Yeah. So it's just about yeah. working that, you know, working that out. I think yeah. we've been on like Monica. a swing with that, haven't we? That, that basically yeah. we've we've started our careers, we've been working on on more of like the corporate work. Mm -hmm. Now our portfolios are full of it, and yeah, again back to tailoring our portfolios to be like, okay, well actually I want to work, I want to work on a natural wine brand. Okay, so all right, design a fucking natural wine then. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. but but it yeah, took yeah, us yeah. a very long time to I think to have the confidence to be like, you know what? Yeah, I can just design my own thing and I can do it really good. Um, yes, I'm surprised it took us so long. But that's what you've got to do. You, like you said, you've got to tell yourself. But then it's again, the art of playing. Brands and, go on, go on, Christine. No, no, please say that. Please, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I, I was just going to say, you know, time's an interesting concept. Because I think as humans, we naturally put a time frame on how long we think, you know, we expect things should take. But actually, yeah. like Vivian Westwood didn't start her design yeah. fashion career until she was 40. 
you know, and look at her, you know, RIP now to Viv, but, you know, look at her legacy that she's left behind. Like, I think we're all so keen to say, by the age of 30, I've got to be married. And have by yeah, and listen. Like, <laughs> 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 it's like, no, that's yeah. not true. Like, forget yeah. about your age, forget about anything. Like, the most important thing is that you feel that you're progressing throughout your career and that you're happy. You know, if you're not happy, then actually how can you give your your best version of yourself to any project you can't you know so I think yeah. your well-being and your mental health and your stability in that respect is way more important than thinking oh, actually I should be here now because I'm 32 or I should be here, you know at 35 I want to be there and then you don't get there and then you're like oh shit I failed you know yeah. so yeah oh, listen I feel you. that me <laughs> I can feel that <laughs> honestly saying it like the resonation with that is like you know I mean 30s around the corner and in my head, like leaving university, it was always like, right, I'll do a five year stint here, and I'll do a couple of years here, and then by <laughs> 30, I'm going to have my own agency, you know? And, yeah, and it's like, yeah. I, think, I feel like it's only now hitting, like, I'm not even 30, I'm bloody 29. Oh, um, you're just, <laughs> so you're like your baby. <laughs> um, Tell you, when you only been... 30, you're going to feel different. You're going to feel amazing. That's like 30s. I'm, only, I'm 32, so I've had two years of it, and they've been the best. <laughs> years of my life so far and any 30 year old that you speak to should be saying the same thing because that's when you feel like you've got your, your 20s you know like you're still yes, discovering yeah. who you are your identity like you know messing about a bit and then mm. you're 30s you're like right I'm ready let's own it let's yeah. take it on board you know so uh yeah, yeah you're gonna smash it yeah 100 I think there's definitely that energy as well and you can feel it you can feel the transition a little bit more it's like being like undeniable and just even with this pod you know like yeah. We sat on this for so long and it's just got to the point now we're just fucking doing it, you know, we're just yeah. doing things and not trying Amazing. to overthink things, you know, like I think we're both, me and me and Michael are very, uh, we know ourselves very well, do you know what I'm saying, we're, we've always been on very similar paths and um, the upwards and downwards trajectories, you know what I'm saying, throughout to get to where we are now, it's just doing it, it it's just doing shit, just playing, doing stuff, the art of play um, and, and yeah, just not, not being undeniable, isn't it, not taking no yeah, shit. Yeah, totally. There's a delay. Can you hear me? Yeah, go all good. Going? All right. Um, now we're just going to pick up your point where you said about that you sat on the podcast, um, you know, for ages, and now look where you are. And that's something that I hadn't done ever. I like, sat on a project. I'd always been very, very um, ambitious to do it, except yeah. my last project. I did that exact thing. So I've just launched the pod uh, podcast, Black People Can't Swim. And I'd sat on that uh -huh. since last year. Um, you know, and and I felt, and I'd never really, I didn't, a few years ago, I did quite a lot of panel discussions and someone asked me, have you ever had imposter syndrome? And I said, what's imposter syndrome? And the whole audience <laughs> laughed at me. Yeah, yeah. And I felt, and I got, I went bright red, I was really embarrassed. I was like, God, oh. I'm so stupid. Why do I not know what that means? And then my mate were like, no, that's amazing that you don't know what it means because you never feel it. Because I, I don't know, yeah, I feel oh. like the way that I've been brought up, because, as I mentioned, like I've never, I've always just been a unique individual to who I am because of my background um, and my upbringing. I've never really felt like I was never good enough for something. Anyway, mm -hmm. this last project, I, that's imposter syndrome is exactly what I felt. I was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to get this podcast out? Why are people going to listen to my story? It's very niche. Mm -hmm. I've been told that loads of times. Even my agent told me that. Um Anyway, I did the trailer, which I procrastinated. I was like, oh, God, I can't do it. And then we did it last weekend. I put it out on Monday. And I cannot yeah. tell you the amount of <coughs> views, the amount of shares, the amount of swim stories that I've received globally. In fact, majority from American swimmers, like black American swimmers, like legends that have reached out to me. It's just like, you know, it's mad. So I guess my point here is, yeah, you know, we do, um, you know, we do kind of sit on stuff and procrastinate but then actually when it's out there you feel so proud and you're like god why did I not do that three months ago I'd have been much further on now you know but it's just about doing it isn't it that's the hard part it's like yeah. diving and getting it done um yeah so yeah I, I hear you on that I watched the trailer it's, and it's really cool Sadie um, oh, fine. I, yeah. so I so awesome. you actually you mentioned that I think was it 90 or 95 percent of black people don't yes, learn how to swim 95 percent yeah so and you and you talk about the like busting the myth that black people can't swim. Yeah. Why why the ninety five percent of black people why don't they swim? Well, this is 
this is the big question. And this well, is... am I am I, am I going to ruin the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> this is why no one now needs to listen to my podcast. <laughs> okay, we can we can release it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. Um, well, the, the, you know, this is a big um, question. There's a lot of different factors. Um, culturally, in terms of generations, in terms of access, in terms of social constraints, key barriers. Um, you know, there's loads of different reasons. But I only learned to swim last year. You know, and that's, what, that's what's kind of brought this whole thing on. And that's because my dad, mm -hmm. Jamaican guy, he can't swim. My mum can't really swim, so she never took me. Dad took me to swimming lessons, but he he couldn't swim. So for him, it's like, oh, you know, box ticked, I've taken my child to a swim class. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, I sort of learned, then nearly drowned, and then that's why I never kind of set foot back into the water. Uh, but there's loads of things, like a lot of black and brown adults are in low-income employment. Well, they can't afford 75 quid a month to pay for a nanny to take their kids swimming, as well as, like, swim mm -hmm. clubs, as well as all the, you know, armbands and all the get-up for swimming. Um, they also don't have the time. They're working around the clock. Um, you know, black hair, like Afro hair, you know, that gets completely ruined in chlorine. That's why I've part of the soul cap that Athena approved. They um, make swim caps for Afro hair. You know, so there's loads of different bits and pieces that I've been trying to explore and unpack through also black history, uh, you know, like the slave trade. Because actually I was mentioning to someone the other day that Africans could actually swim, of course, like, they're, you know, the next to the water. But during the slave trade, that skill of theirs was completely stripped from them. Their whole freedom, their whole identity, mm -hmm. like even their Afro hair was shaved off them, you know, to strip that identity. Um, they were told that they, the Africans could, like, they swam front crawl, but they were told that that's animalistic and that they're doing it wrong and it should be breaststroke, you know, elegant breaststroke. You know, so there's all these different bits and bits, like the bathhouses in America, like, you know, blacks could only use those at the end of the day when all the white people had been there, made all the water dirty, and then they got abuse while they were there. So why would they want to go to the bathhouses, mm. which now we know as, you know, um, local swimming pools? So, you know, there's loads of bits and pieces um, that kind of make me realise why black people can't swim. Uh, but there's loads of things, you know, they can't, they can't, there's like, how many black jockeys do you know? Like, how many black surfers do you know? You know, there's loads of... How many black of, graphic designers do you know? That's, how many black that's a bit, it's, yeah, that's a big yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, I, um, one of my uh, guests is Victor Okonowu, and he is um, a black chef and he was on MasterChef Professionals, got right through like, you know, to the finals. And when I would do my research for him, I discovered that only there's only five black Michelin star chefs in the UK. You know, so it's bizarre. Like they just, yeah, there's a huge, a huge barrier and a huge conversation that needs sort of, um, that the barrier needs removing around these mm -hmm. black occupations and why mm -hmm. these, the, you know, this kind of marginalised um, group of people are not getting those opportunities. And that's what my mm -hmm. whole series will be about. But this is just the first around swimming. Someone reached out to me, yeah. actually. I've got a call with him in a couple of weeks in L.A. And he has got he's actually founded. He's got his own black people surf crew. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, so it, things are happening. Like, and he, he yeah. was like, oh my God, I've discovered your trailer for your podcast. Like, I want to come on your pod. You know, I want to talk more. So I feel like, yeah, there are <clears throat> pockets and people starting to talk around this uh, this topic. I feel like in yeah, graphic nice. design, I've like I've probably only met like two or three people that are that are black. In, in graphic design and I think I've been in the industry for about eight years no way. Um, I've not thought about that one graphic yeah which is crazy and I think th there's some there's some cool stuff going on now like I've seen um like I can't remember who it, there's lots of different agencies which are involved in um I think the 10,000 uh, um, hiring 10,000 black interns mm -hmm. um yeah introduce them into into companies but I like I think that's a good start. But I think like just going back to what you were saying before, Sadie, about low income areas, like some of these kids, like they're not even making it to university. Do you know what I mean? Not even making it to college. So it, it's it like goes even fucking like way further back than yes. Than do you know what I mean? A lot earlier than that. Totally. Mm. Well, you know, if you think about it, right? If you see someone in your hood that's wearing the latest trainers, 
looking dapper, wearing the latest, you know, um, tracksuit or whatever. And they're getting so much money from whatever they're doing. They're going to aspire to look like them. So they end up being involved in the gang. Why would you go to university, get yourself in debt, which is a narrative, um, yeah. when you can actually make loads of cash, being involved in the gang and yeah. wearing the yeah. latest trick? Like, no brainer. Yeah. So that's why, uh, going back to your point, you know, we do need to have these conversations back in primary school, you know, at secondary school, where we give, um, you know, these kids opportunities for internships or live briefs or whatever it is to get, give them a little feel for yeah you know for these for these sort of jobs because actually it's really rewarding Mm -hmm. but yeah it's a whole nother mission (laughs) it is and it's super important you know i mean i think yeah i think a lot of it comes down to the exposure right Mm. and being that understanding that you do or anyone you know what i mean can have the capabilities to do whatever subject matter you're interested in right regardless of the color of your fucking skin man oh yeah bullshit and it's something me and Michael have always said about this. Obviously, we're in the design industry, so we can speak about that hands on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Every agency I've been in, um, same as Michael, like like one or oh, two. Wow. Like, yeah, it's mad. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it and it doesn't like the thing that doesn't really like coincide for me is like, um, you look at like hip hop, yeah, and that and and where that derives from. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And and obviously, um. Like culturally speaking, that comes from black heritage, so to say, right? Mm-hmm. The the creativity which is held within that industry, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and it stuff. influences everything else yeah. that we see, like, which is then forgotten it, about. I don't understand though. That doesn't then, us, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Get to graphic design, so to say, or it, it goes back to like what you were saying at the start, yeah, where it's like how do you monetize some of it? And like, when you look at people who are really kind of pioneers within the field, no doubt they've done that subject matter for fuck all. At yeah, some yeah, point yeah. In the totally. just, you know what I mean? They've just done it for play, yeah. you know, yeah. whether it be music, whether it be art, whether it be cooking, you know, like yeah, someone's totally. probably done it at the, at the heart. So it's like, it's how you take that and then make that become a thing yeah. for everyone. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't understand if it gets so tailored. Mm. along the way you know when there's so many crossovers through industries yeah i don't understand how it ends up being so kind of like in a way single-minded if yeah i'm not much of that but you know like like look look at me for example like i'm a female artist of color as a sculptor working with metal like there's yeah. so many barriers there. First of all, being a female artist, yeah, fine, that's kind of been you know banished now. Like we all know that that's you know that that's more common now. We don't have as much difficulty as we did in maybe like the seventies being yeah. being a female um, artist. But I'm also an artist of color, which mm-hmm. again, okay, there are a lot of it's kind of um, been oh what's the word like diluted now there's loads of exhibitions that are all black artists you know because the whole black lives Mm -hmm. matter obviously that whole movement created a huge um sort of uh flood or or a huge influx of all these like black people only events or series or whatever so that's fine but the the thing is that i'm a sculptor and i work with metal and that's class or that's seen as a more masculine um style of work style of art so my narrative as a female sculptor as a woman of color is exactly that you know like i work with copper copper has got incredible benefits you know not just environmental or health but also also spiritual which is the bit that i focus on Mm -hmm. um you know and when i mention this to people and i tell them that i'm also a presenter you know and i i you know do the tv bits and whatnot they they can then see me as a package they think oh okay not only can you create but then you can talk about it you can market mm-hmm. it you can do this this this, this and then the project becomes bigger and bigger and bigger so mm-hmm. it's almost like trying to find like you know i guess i'm now talking about pitching or you know come up with ideas it's almost <clears> like <throat> trying to find a package that people can't say no to yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. um mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. that's this is yeah. kind of what I struggle with, you know, this idea of being an artist because I trained in fashion design. I don't really know the art world. I don't, I'm not a fine artist. I didn't train in fine art. 
obviously I know yeah. a bit about art history, like fashion history, of course, I'm not daft, um, but you know, I don't quite know how galleries work or how commissions really work. Mm -hmm. So when I when I left the fashion world and went straight in, you know, and then kind of dived into the art world and got my first commission, um, you know, for the Ivy, it was the Christmas tree. I had no idea how to manage a 30 grand budget. You know, I had no idea how to create 11 foot sculpture. Yeah. I've been creating mm -hmm. sculptures for a body. Um, mm -hmm. So I sort of had to learn on the job. Um, you know, so, yeah, I guess it's just about really trying to find, you know, sort of who you are and how and how you have um, a difference to any other graphic designer in your case or in my case, any other artist or, yeah. you know, personality. Um, you know, yeah. what, what can I bring to the table that's so unique in comparison to anyone else? Um, mm -hmm. And I guess that, that's why I got that you know, th this commission here. Um, you know, I, I'd been at Paris Fashion Week, so I had a brand, I did all the fashion weeks, and I'd left with 12 orders, only one came through. <clears throat> and I was like, are you joking? Like, how can you stand there at my booth, make me tailor all my pieces to suit your clients, yeah. your consumers? Yeah. I'm talking global from LA to Mexico to Australia. And then only one of them comes off. I'm like, I can't do this. So I completely yeah. changed my narrative. Um, and stepped into the art world and within within three months I got that commission and I got um I was on BBC radio for only artists and I could mm -hmm. choose anybody to speak to and of course I chose Grace Jones but she doesn't do interviews yeah. <laughs> so I chose um who's <laughs> actually equally you know major I went his studio it's absolutely mind-blowing he's a multidisciplinary artist trained in architecture but now makes furniture and makes jewelry uh -huh. you know so it just emphasized my point i train in fashion design but now i make i don't know copper drinks trolleys for wimbledon or i make public sculptures for the forest or or, you know, right, right with this, right, right with this said, like, let's go, let's go through some work. I was trying to find that, I was trying to find a beautiful transition <laughs> into talking about the first piece, but then you started touching on something. So, Lewis, with that said, so we're going to talk about the Copper Queen more in depth Copper and how Queen. she got to becoming the Copper Queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you can pull up the first piece of work, Lewis, the Landmark Sky Art Show that um, we just referenced, then, and then we'll start from there and then we'll go oh, on to the. Is. <laughs> so, where, so, where, so where does this come about here so like for sky art so they they reached out see yes. your work and then yeah so, talk to us about the process yeah that's it so a producer messaged me saying no she called me she said i there's a she, show coming out uh, we're, we're trying to get commissioned and i think you're perfect for it it's about creating a landmark um but representing where you're from and I, yeah. I, you know, I'm like Yorkshire through and through. So I had to create something to represent Yorkshire. And I was like, yeah, look, sounds cool. Didn't hear anything then for six months. She called me again. She was right. You've got to apply. I said, I don't do competitions. I never apply to, I never do open calls, never do competitions because <clears throat> um, I don't like, I, I don't, I'm a sore loser, if I'm honest. And I just don't like not winning. <laughs> so uh, there's no point in me even, you know, applying. Anyway, so I didn't apply. And then I got a message from a different producer saying, Sadie, please apply. I'll extend the deadline. And I was like, oh, for God's sake. So anyway, Liam and I just quickly, you know, kind of boshed something together. And then uh, I got a phone call saying, yeah, you know, we'd love to have you in the show. I was like, what? No way. Nice. Two weeks, <laughs> two weeks to design, make and film the whole thing. And actually, wow. it wasn't meant to be a freestanding piece. It was meant to be a mobile that suspended from the ceiling. Right. But then when uh -huh. we knew that it was going to be out in the public, <laughs> I was like, well, that's not going to work. So that <laughs> we did some dry, stro dry, dry stone walling, um, you know, for like the plinths to hold the tubing up and the, the Yorkshire rose. So this is called the home of the rose. Um, and it's essentially the Yorkshire Rose, when you stand underneath it, you look up into the Yorkshire Rose and the copper will allow you to feel rejuvenated, feel uplifted, because copper is a spiritual conductor and it repels negativity. Um, so, yeah, it was just, you know, it's still, yeah, one of the highlights of my career because <coughs> I feel like I've, I've made a real mark in the world. Like anyone can go to the Lake District, go to Grisdale Forest and go and see my piece. 
so yeah it's a really nice one to work on and it's not just so, anywhere in the world it's like yeah, back yeah. it's like back up north and what i was just yeah. saying to <laughs> before before we were talking is like i remember like as you know as, as young as being three or four like going going and walking on like mm-hmm. Beacon Fell, which is in preston and certain certain places in the lake district and you know, there's lots of beautiful places like up that way. And you see these yeah. sculptures and, and they've been there for like fuck knows how long, like hundreds of years. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that you get to put yours there and it's gonna stay there for good. Yeah. Is yeah. like a like, what a feeling. I know, honestly. Yeah. And I remember when they were saying, like, you know, realistically, where would you like it? I thought, well, I'd love it in the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. But Claire Lilly, who's the director of the sculpture park, she was one of the judges, so you know, there's a conflict of interest there. And then I was thinking about other places, and then they'd suggested Grisdale Forest, and, you, and as you can see there from that picture, yeah, yeah. the view, I, I was like, I'd never even heard of Grisdale Forest, I was like, what's that? And then when I turned up and saw my position, I was like, wow, this is perfect, like, look at the view, yeah. like, look at all the trees, yeah. and it's just like, you know, it's, it's almost like framing the forest, so yeah, yeah. we're tough to bits, so that's me, yeah, like, dicking about, and that was like the first time that, you know, when we went there to install it, and then I had to like change clothes and then I got my fabricators to like take some pictures of me fannying about under the sculpture. So I just, yeah, we're just so chuffed, like so excited and so happy to see this piece. And this, I love the window. Sky, well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's nice, amazing. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and cool. and go, going back to, um, yeah, like Beacon Fell, which is really close to where, to where, uh, where I'm from in Preston, there's, there's like these wood carvings, there's like a snake, which you can like, you can run along as, as like a little toddler or as a kid. And like, you know, to think, 20 odd years later i could like I, I took my son there and now he runs along that snake like oh, somebody amazing. somebody will be having those moments with your art do you know what i mean like 100 you know which you don't even think about like yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah. Michael, i've never thought about like that so like one day when if we have a child i could take it to take it take them it... to, <laughs> to the <laughs> but like look this is what mommy made yeah for sure 100 like percent. yeah yeah oh, Nice. Or a dog or a cat, you could you could just get. Well, yeah, I, I, don't know, I don't know where you're at in life, but yeah, <laughs> take something there. <laughs> nice point. Yeah, never thought. Well, of you should be super proud of that. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it. It's sick. It's nice. And you know what I mean? As well, like that was such a experience because like, that's I'd done TV before, but never like on me as a creator, as an innovator, as a maker. So having mm-hmm. to like show my working process show like you know my drawings my thinking process and then working all the different compacts so i went to like a metal spinners this amazing guy in essex this black guy had been there for like 20 odd years he like spam the copper dome for me so i learned about that then i went to a cnc cutters in south london and like to have all my you know copper me- um petals all laser cut you know so I learned so much on the job and, you know, being filmed doing it, it was just, it was, yeah, such a pleasure. Like, I'd do it all again in a happy. It was amazing. Yeah, I bet. You must have copper stacked up in a studio somewhere. <laughs> I've got so, do you know, know what I mean? I've got so much <laughs> yeah. And I've so much <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where it is on here because imagine someone will come to see it. It's so expensive. Um, <laughs> I bet, I bet. I need an exhibition Do you know what I mean? because I've got so much of it. Like it's just sat there. So I need to get an exhibition going and get some stuff sold. So yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So bouncing off that then, um, you ended up doing the copper Christmas tree for the ivy, right? Uh, was this after this? No, no. Copper Christmas tree was the oh, first was ever before. commission that I got. Uh, oh, sorry. We should have done that first. We yeah. should have done that first. Oh then. no, it's my. We'll bounce that. <laughs> this, is, this is me all over. I bounce about. One minute I'm talking about teaching, and I'm talking about something else. I bounce around. Like I love it. Tomorrow. Say it. So, yeah, the energy's the great. Yeah. yeah, that was my first one. Um, ah, right. That, yeah, really, sort of. That was like, yes, I am an artist. You know, and yeah, was, yeah, nice. That was commissioned by the Ivy, so you know, I had to go to the headquarters and like, um you know, share my vision and my ideas and it were either me or Tom Dixon, basically. And I was like, well, I can yeah. do it for half the price. And that's why. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> oh, it's like more. Tom Dixon oh. studio as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I imagine that. So, yeah. No, it were a good one. That I, Yeah, that were really nice to know that I'd made the right decision to leave fashion and enter the art world. Yeah. Oh, um, that's beautiful. But yeah, it was good, that one. Nice. And then bouncing off that, then obviously you get commissioned by a brand. So I think this goes back, well, crosses over a little bit with the conversation we were saying before. Obviously, I can imagine you're 
you turn some stuff down, but obviously you accept some stuff. So starting with Sip Smith, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Obviously they're known. I've worked, I, no, I've not directly worked on Sip Smith, but I've been in studios where they've been working on Sip mm. Smith. And I understand, obviously, the copper still is one of the iconic features for yeah. Sip Smith, right? So, you, yes. so you're playing well, on that. All the gin so. distilleries are made out of copper. Yeah, 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 that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so they so where did that come about? So they they re, did they, they reach out personally? Um that was direct yeah. or was it the Yeah, I'm just thinking actually, because initially I made one for London Craft Week and This is perfect though, isn't it? Like the crossover is absolutely perfect. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Yeah, so they reached out to me to make something in response to their logo. So obviously their logo is a swan neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for London Craft Week. And they'd chosen three crafters or makers, artists, mm-hmm. to feature on their website as part of London Craft Week. Mm-hmm. And I'd never actually made a functional... I mean, that's product design, really, right? I'd never yeah, made yeah, yeah, yeah. anything like that. I'd never <laughs> designed anything like that. So luckily, you know, having a fiancé that's very good at this type of thing, you know, he was able to figure out how it, you know, how to make it, essentially, how, you know, so you can actually use it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then we made it and it was great and then they asked me again if i could make two more for wimbledon because they wanted to serve nice. gin cocktails to like the celebrities at wimbledon and i was like oh yeah great well that were an absolute nightmare because i'm like you know not long to turn it round. the budget wasn't great and you know with co- the coppers so thin you've got you know you've got to like, like yeah. nail it all together, you've got all your pipes, cut them all the right size, and I'm there like dragging Liam into the studio on this super hot day, and oh, it was nice. <laughs> we got there in the end, and they looked great. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to do. In fact, do you, yeah, I think I'm going to reach out to them again and say, "Hey, do you, do you have anything else making?" <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a, a good project actually. That was just kind of after lockdown, so a couple of years ago now. Yeah, I think this yeah. is really good to to um or for people that. I speak to who are lost and they don't know what they want to do. And I tell them often, like, just what is it that you like? Like, just do that. You'll mm-hmm. find someone will pay for it. Like when you get really good at it, yeah, yeah. you, you like copper. And if, if somebody said to me like, Oh, I like copper. You'd think, well, yeah. Okay. What are you going to do with that? You're going to collect coins or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Like, this, this just goes to show that if you can, if you can master something like you you can sell it and the, like you said before christian the perfect collaboration comes where sip smith the brand is built around copper it's like mm. like it just makes sense the two go together and, and here you are like creating work getting paid for it um yeah, again it's tell tell, tell yourself <laughs> that's what yeah. i'm taking yeah. from this yeah. yeah yeah for sure but also you know it you know, you have your pros and your cons because it's great I'm known as the copper queen, but then I feel like sometimes people do think, well, she can't do anything else because it's all about the copper. Mm-hmm. But actually, I trained in fashion, so I can use fabric. I can work with other metals because it's the same process. So what I'm trying to do now is when I'm pitching ideas, I've got like a couple of like public sculpture people that I'm talking to for a few ideas. You know, it's not just... <clears throat> copper because it could even be that i clad it in copper it doesn't actually be it yeah. doesn't need to be made out the whole thing doesn't need to be made out of copper because copper it's expensive it's very you know it's quite yeah. malleable um it's not very strong really so often you'd make things out of cortez steel or and then you clad it in the copper you know so i'm trying to be clever yeah, now yeah. with different ways of still making it look like copper or you know suggesting that i do copper and something else so i had a commission recently in uh, south africa um, I need to get it up on the website, actually, I've not done that yet. Um, and it's on the side of a members club in Joburg. And I made the piece, it's only a small piece that I'd made in my studio. And I pitched it to them, I said, look, you could have this. And it's like a little render on, my, on Procreate on the iPad. I was like, look, you can have this on the side of your, you know, your building. And uh, it's like, oh, yeah, that's great. So I was like, oh, okay, well, we're doing it then. So I had to reach out to them, <laughs> the fabricator in south africa so it's all been done remotely so i've had to i've shown him on zoom like this is the piece you know and then like you know giving him the measurements and he's had to go out and source the copper um which in like the year that it took to get it all done obviously inflation it was mad the copper was so expensive but then i didn't actually make much money out of the whole project in the end um but the client didn't want it to look like copper he wanted it to look like oxidized copper which is of course green so yeah. the so my fabricator in South Africa 
got the copper, made the pieces, like meat, like, I don't know, I think it's like four metres long, the whole thing down the side of the building, and then put some, I like, applied some acidic treatment to it so it is green. You know, so now um, I need to be showing people that I can actually work with copper in different ways to give it different finishes, yeah. you know? We can just Photoshop a few bits for you. Go, here's one in silver, here's one in gold. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to come to you, Mike. <laughs> oh, brilliant. But it is, great. it is great where it can go, and I like that. Are you kind of looking at different? It's almost like, right, you, you know what I mean? It's, you explore it for its purity, and then, all right, well, what layers can we add on to this? Other ways we can dissect things, other incorporations yeah. of potentially other materials that kind of blend well and stuff but it's nice it's like you're constantly adding on in it or you're constantly reappropriating the material which yeah. you think is cool um yeah totally yeah and then it, and again it's that serendipitous thing in it you never know like you the, the art of play you yes. you know and then what that takes you on this journey and then you end up doing these commissions and then but it's all from that that, that source totally yeah absolutely well it's funny because then you get people reaching out being like oh i saw you on this show or I saw your piece here and actually I want to you know can we work together but in a completely different capacity you know I'm meant to be presenting um this like something in a couple of months and you know she found me on Instagram but through I think it must have been an artwork it wasn't actually through presenting yeah. but actually just seeing me be able to talk about the artwork and like actually it'd be good to present this mm -hmm. thing so you know, yeah, it all kind of comes together in the end because at the end of the day, I'm one person and I'm creating all this body of work. So, you know, the, the mm -hmm. red thread is me, you know, and the same for you guys. Like, you know, you've got your graphic design thing going on and what you create is, you know, coming directly from you. So, like, that is the red thread. It'll always have a certain aesthetic that relates it back to you guys. Um, and that's what's important, mm -hmm. like, to keep keep that aesthetic going. Like, don't don't try and be what you're not. Because this is what mm. happened in the fashion world. They wanted me to design T-shirts for their clients. I don't even wear T-shirts. Why am I going to design a T-shirt? And I could have done. I could have made a fortune. But I'm not interested in that. I want to be authentic to who I am. And, you know, as a creative. Um, and I had to decline it. And then that's when I obviously stepped over into the art world. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, being authentic to yourself is the only way forward, I think. That's really mm -hmm. interesting, Sadie, because obviously the, a lot of the brands that we work with in the corporate world, we've got to be authentic for that brand. So, like, we've got to be the voice for oh, yeah. that brand. We've got to create the the communication for that mm -hmm. brand so it doesn't let us live and be ourselves. And I think, you know, from the past few episodes of the podcast, obviously speaking to you and speaking to Liam, it's like trying to live a little bit more of that artist which is inside yeah. us because we are artists. We create yeah. things every single day, but yeah. you get caught up in the commercial world a lot of, of the time. Of course. Yeah, totally, totally. But then I guess what you can yeah. do is have your own little, you know, like do like a self-initiated project, obviously time permitting, um, you know, on the side. And then that would generate more business because that's what I feel like. At Liam, obviously, he works in the advertising world, but he's often doing like little bits of his own things here and there. And then people are like, oh, that's really interesting. They can see a sense of humour in that. And then that would drive <laughs> other narratives. But, you know, it's all time permitting, isn't it? It's like, if we all. This like is it. where Christian is now. Like, he's showing me some bits on a project he's working on. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, and it, it's so exciting for me to see because we're always showing each other commercial work where this is, this is just, this is Christian in a nutshell. Yeah. Amazing. Um, <laughs> I won't say too much now. You're going to save it, save it. But it's, it's so cool. I'll say it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you know me you guess you know what I'm saying but I'll put it again it's them things in it and it's, and it's pure out of that place and play and I'm going to put that out there and hopefully that attracts more of of the stuff in it you know um, who who do you look towards for influences Sadie mm. like who like is there certain people or sculptures or something not within sculpture that is very uh -huh. you know what I mean yeah um from like an artist perspective, I would say Ron Arad is like up there as someone that I aspire to be or, or mm -hmm. you know, kind of, I, I love the fact that his shapes are so bold and when you see it, you know it's a Ron Arad, a Ron Arad piece. And in fact, him and I featured in the same exhibition. I, every year I do a Bonhams project, um, which is like one of the, yeah. you know, the famous yeah. auction mm -hmm. houses, um, like the Cube. And he did one as well. But what I love is that he's got an aesthetic. You know we're on our piece. And one minute it's furniture, it's a chair. The next minute it's a mm -hmm. building. The next minute it's jewellery. 
And I think if I could get to that level where I can just turn my head into any discipline, but st- people also know that's a Sadie Clayton. That yes, yes, yes. You know, like yeah. I want people to be like, oh, I know that. That's a Sadie Clayton piece. You know, yes. that for no. me is what's um, well, yeah, what what I kind of aspire. Yeah, look, so you can see his beautiful. things are super, uh, you know, organic. Um, avant-garde pieces that are really modern really contemporary um and he just doesn't care he's just so yes. like his, yeah. his studio is crazy like the ceiling's all upside down and it's just crazy uh, but we had yeah the best time together chatting about art and tech and you know just being being creative just being like just being curious i think that's what's important constantly ask yeah. questions i've always been yeah. like that mum everyone always thinks i'm dead nosy i just like to know <laughs> i just <laughs> <laughs> i'm the same <laughs> straight up saying it i get my water can't if you don't ask you don't get do you so that's oh, me man. but i also like you know because i'm often i am teaching my students how to create and how to research yeah. and how to build a visual narrative you know so even though they're fashion students I, ne- I never tell them to look at fashion you know you've got to look at sculptures paintings textiles drawings because that's then what you can look at analyze and, and create your own um you know shapes and forms from that so I often refer back to people like Anthony Gormley or Henry Moore or Barbara Hepworth you know real icons mm-hmm. of yeah. of now um mm-hmm. so yeah they're the sorts of people that i that i look at for sure beautiful i love it um right so i know not not that we're stuck for time but we've kind of we you know what i mean we're not got all day uh, uh, even yeah. though we could chat all oh, day so you know me i can talk all day. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm conscious of, of taking too much of your sunday but i think a nice a nice one to finish on and i think it's really beautiful and again what you said before about um the whole kind of like you're not an influencer, but you're an educator. Do you know what I mean? I think that regardless of the influencer terminology, you influence people, you know what I'm saying? And you inspire people. So um, you work on obviously presenting the Britain's best young artist on BBC and iPlayer. Yeah. (laughs) Lewis pulled this up. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you was a judge. You was a judge for 14 episodes. Yeah. um, And obviously again influencing these kids um yeah. you know what that masterpieces. Show, yeah that show was just um it was so beautiful to be i look at you sadie you're sick you know <laughs> <laughs> you suit that role She's like, it's, it's <laughs> i love it i love um, it no you know she um she talking about herself in third person uh what was beautiful about that show i was on the first one um the first series as the mentor for one of the finalists but this one i was literally yeah. you know mentoring them throughout the whole stage and there was you know they're only 10 to 14 years old and yeah. there were 20 odd of them it was so hard to whittle them down to the final winner yeah. but from day dot ricky and i supported the underdog you know and that's why the winner chloe that's why she won. You know, she she was authentic. She was you know, this 13-year-old black girl from Newcastle, lived with a family, mum raising them all. And her talent was just mind-blowing. And her visual narrative and her technique, everything as a young artist just blew our minds. Um, and, yeah. to, and to be that person that's also from up north, from a little town, to be able to give this young artist this opportunity to have her work displayed in Tate Modern, which is any artist's dream, oh, yeah. just it, felt yeah. so rewarding. And more yeah. than anything, like, you know, yeah, I like to be on TV. Yeah, I'm not shy in front of a camera. Fine, I like to push my looks. But for me, it was all about nurturing these young people and giving them that platform to, to explore and go wild and just express themselves through creativity. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to get recommissioned because BBC is shit. I hope you listen. Um, and, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're commissioning other things. So, uh, yeah, because do you know what? I had a meeting at Tate Britain the other week and I, I had a hat on and I were on the phone and this couple kept looking at me and I thought, well, they, you know, I get stares a lot, whatever, but they just kept looking back. I thought, what's going on here? Anyway, I put the phone down and they said, um, Oh, we thought it 
where were you? We recognised your voice, but obviously you've got a hat on, so we didn't see you through. But I just <laughs> have to say, you were amazing on Britain's Best Young Artist, and our children are so, were so inspired after every single episode. They sat down, they got all the paints and bends out, and they all started drawing. And I thought, that oh, is success. You know, and then that's not just, we have a more, just more people than just than just that couple. Like, I want to say maybe seven, eight people have come up to me, randomers on the street and just said, oh, yeah. you know, like, you really inspired our kids. And that, for me, it. is just so heartwarming. And that, that for me, is creativity. Like, to inspire the next generation and give them that platform. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that yeah. as well. Like, like, fro or not you are absolutely un <laughs> unmistakable and i think like that's what we look for <laughs> in in design it. like that's what we do for yeah. a job we try and make unmistakable <laughs> assets you are an unmistakable asset yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you, 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 you live and breathe like the whole thing just like obviously just you are the brand like you are yeah, you yeah, are yeah, the brand. yeah. yeah i love yeah. it someone said I, um, yeah. someone uh said i did a, an interview once and i'm gonna get it up so i get it right word for word and um where is it? Oh, I know. I sent it to uh, one sec. Um, this journalist did this piece on me and he called me. This is what he called me. This is his quote. Uh, when I think of Sadie Clayton, I think of colour, exuberance and happiness. Where does the brand Sadie, oh, sorry, where does the brand start and Sadie the person finish? Or is it all one big dolly mixture of fabulousness? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought <laughs> Dolly mixture, like we all know Dolly mixture. Like, yeah. That's literally it. Like I'm just this mix it like this mixture, this melting pot of just creativity and colour. And that I just get so excited by that. So that's, that's so much better than it. like, oh yeah, he's the guy with the beard. <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, yeah, that's so fucking go straight, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about this a lot. Like when I have an interaction with someone, whether I see them again or not, like how do I want to leave like what sort yeah. of thought do I want to leave in their mind? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, like I guess a lot of the time it comes down to like the words that I use or the way I speak or yeah, the the, the character that, that that comes from me. But yeah, yeah like sure. you're obviously like your, your aesthetic, um, yeah, is is so loud that <laughs> like, I think sometimes back... it might piss some people off. They're like, God, get away! You're too much. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Well, uh, Welcome. I can imagine, like, with, with, um, <laughs> Christian, like, you're you're someone who, like, you, you, you fill the room with energy when you walk yeah, into it, do you know what yeah, I mean? You do. Um, and for some people, like, for me, the first time I met you, it was uncomfortable because I felt uncomfortable being that person. But, like, just spending so much time with you and, you know, speaking to people like you said, it, like, it, it, it helps, it helps uh, people come out the shells a lot more. I think you've helped me do that a lot, Christian. Um, which I think I'm I'm so grateful for because uh, yeah, like I feel like I can walk into a, a room now with, with so much more confidence and um, like it's really as it's you really should, bro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. It's, yeah, and just it just, just helps. Last, yeah, totally. Just one last point I want to make, which is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. But I um I had to. It was it was a uh, student's graduation on Friday, so I had to get my cap and gown on. And at one stage, like maybe a year ago, I had to teach some business students. They were very, very difficult, like these group of lads. And um, I'm quite a strict tutor. And I just say, look, guys, I've got my degree. I'm trying to help you get yours. If you want yeah, it, you yeah. just get on with it. If you don't, then leave my room sort of thing. Anyway, so they gave me a lot of stick. And at one point I was like, look, is it because I'm a female tutor? Because you've had, you've had all males before. And he got a bit like, mm. Anyway, so I saw him on Friday where it said, did you know what? He said, you were, you were the best tutor I ever had. And when the year after, I was thinking, why are you not on my timetable? It's like, and now I'm on my way to go and get an MBA. And that, to me, I was just like, <laughs> wow. Like, that's why I educate and that's why I do yeah, what I do. Yeah. And I remain true to myself. Because, yeah, I'm loud and I'm, you know, high energy and excitable. But I can also be very strict and very on it and make sure my students mm -hmm. succeed. And some people like it, some people don't. But then actually they they took what they wanted from it and they said to me, oh, you know, everything you taught me, I still use today. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, going mm -hmm. back to your point, yeah, you've got to feel, feel fill a room and also be assertive when you need to and also mm -hmm. know how to read a room and ensure that, mm -hmm. you know, people around, yeah, you make impressions or, you know, you make uh, yeah. an influence because then that kind of 
stays stays with those people that you've met and then I was like oh well I've launched a podcast called black people can't swim so can you follow it it's like oh my god I can't swim I'm going to follow it it's like I'm going to make a podcast called black people can swim I was like there we go the business the biggest business <laughs> <attribute is going. laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah it's good I just I just love people I'm a people yeah I like being around humans that's why lockdown were quite yeah different. but yeah yeah, fucking hell. I mean, and again, that's a conversation, right? I know. Jesus. But now we're out the side. Like, <laughs> we're all busy, busy, busy. Like, no. Back work. outside. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love it. Um, right. Okay. Quickly, before yeah. we, before we let you go. Um, so you mentioned about, well, subtly about like plans for the future. So I don't know how much you can give away, but is there any little sneak peeks that we can have to what Sadie Clayton's up to in the next year or so? Oh, um, Oh yeah. Well, I um I've been um one of my sculptures has been chosen to be shown at the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition this year. So nice. That's a sick exhibition, you know, as well. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very prestigious exhibition and it's you know That's the way you should talk about it, right? It's a very prestigious exhibition. Oh, yeah. It's not <laughs> no, it's a sick exhibition that <laughs> No, but the thing is, is I'm not an artist. You know, I am an artist. I absolutely am an artist, but I didn't train in art. And therefore, I, I felt kind of, you know, for some time, I felt like a little bit of a fraudster in a way because I was kind of fusing fashion, art and tech. And now I feel like I've yeah. I've entered the world as an artist and I've now got that seal of approval and that stamp because I'm in this exhibition with other, you know, very well-known, mm -hmm. famous artists. So I'm looking forward to that. That's... um in June, early June. And then um, what else have I got going on? Um, well, I'm getting married in three months. So I've got a lot of wedding planning to be doing, <laughs> which is taking quite a chunk of time. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then, yeah, like I've got other meetings that we're talking about, you know, public sculptures, which is exciting. And then this podcast, the first episode goes out on Wednesday and the independent want to talk nice. to me one day about it. So let's see how that goes. Oh, sick! So, you, so when will that be released this week? The independent article well, will be released this week as well. Then I hope so because you know the first episode's out on Wednesday. So I'm hoping that um, when I talk to them, they like what I say and that they want to do a little write up on it because that would be great. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Oh, sick, Sadie! I love it. Like everything you're doing, do you know what I mean? Like everything you're standing for. You know, oh, everyone you're inspiring is re it's really good. It's really great. And it's really inspiring for us as well. Do you know what I mean? To hear and hopefully the listeners hearing too. And I think going back a little bit to the kids thing, which I think is super important. I think the older you get, the less you almost get all this kind of like stuff sucked out of you. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. side of like, if, even if it's just finger painting, why can't you finger paint at 40? You know, exactly. why does it have to be, you know? Let's see that um, child come out. For yeah, sure. 100%. Have to dopamine land. Have you been to dopamine land? No, I've been told about it though in West, right? It's West London ways, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, go, yeah. Go and piss about in the ball pool. Go and just like <laughs> walk around in the forest, be in the meditative suite. It's just so nice. It's very yeah. colourful. Yeah, it definitely raises your uh, dopamine levels for sure. Oh, uh, Michael, we should take the little ones. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd I'd love to feel feel what it's like to be in Sadie's body for one day. <laughs> I've got the dopamine <laughs> land. <laughs> <That crazy thing. laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Well, we've we've gone a little bit over time, so hopefully that's not too bad. But we tried to keep it within the hour, Sadie. Um, but oh, thanks so Red... much for having me. Honestly, it's been so good chatting to you, and also what's no, so thank nice you for you. So much. You know, I've been a guest a few times on podcasts, but not for a long time. And I feel like you kind of you're able to then reflect on your career so far and look back at what you've done and just be reminded of and I think we all need to do that as creative people like make sure you always reflect on what you've done we're always so uh, caught up on what we want to do or what we haven't done but actually reflect on what you have done and be proud of yourself mm -hmm. um yeah I just feel like we're all so quick to forget what we've done so yeah reflecting yeah. and you know journaling writing it down I think it's so important it's super, I say that it really is, you know what I mean? Like trying to keep their feet on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, and that, you, you know what I mean? And you're definitely practicing everything what you're preaching. So I think that's great too, you know. I think next time I said, we said the same to a few of the guests now that we've had on, because again, we try and keep it within this hour. It'd be nice to, um, in the future, when you have got like a specific piece out, just one piece. Yeah. 
and just talk about that and dissect that. You know, Ooh, I think yeah. we said that to everyone. Yeah, because like you get you, we we get people on, and it's like they'll send through like three to five pieces of work, and you could sit and talk about that one piece of work all the way through, right? Um, totally. So yeah. We didn't even talk yeah, about tech I mean, or AI. Do you know what I mean? Like that's another ball game. And oh there's yeah, so the mu- robot stuff. That but I well, well, that, <laughs> well, talk about that another time. Well, yeah, yeah. That, let's pick um, it up. I think when we do talk about that further down the line, I think we'll have more to say because, as we know, ChatGBT and all that stuff, mid journey, it's all about to blow up. But I was working with Sophia, the world's famous humanoid, what five years ago now. And yeah, at that crazy. point, I was like, no, no, it's fine. You know, you can only, it's a computer, you can only do what, it, what it, it can only do what you tell it to do. And now this humanoid robot, Sophia, there's like 14 iterations of her. And now she can banter without the computer, without a human telling her, telling her what to do. You know? Oh, it's mad, isn't it? I, I'm sort of <laughs> using my words. Um, you know, but I, I yeah, I, I do find AI fascinating. And I worked with Ada as well, who's the world's first artist robot with Tate. Um, and again, that was a whole other experience. But yeah, let's see where AI takes us in the future. It's quite scary. I'm a little bit like, oh, should I have promoted it at the time when I did? I don't know. Yeah. Bit I'm excited by it. I'm excited by it. But I think a lot of it is that we we, we did. We have actually done a bit of a pod on it um, <laughs> with our mm. tutor, which is really cool. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because like, Andy is the most creative fucking head. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. um, getting him on something that's really modern, kind of like technology, where he's kind of the other end. You know what I mean? And his his interpretations of it and what he wants to kind of. I think a lot of it. What I'm saying is a lot of it's down to the user in it. You know, yeah. I think. Um, you know, I mean, you got like. Yeah, I was speaking to her about it. I was speaking to a few designers about it the other day about like this whole logo thing recently. Like you can press a button and it generates a thousand logos for you, right? But yeah. it's never. That's great. Don't get it twisted. That I guess, but it's never going to add that warmth, that personality, that strategy, that killer idea. Do you know what I mean? It's just always going to be generically inspired because obviously it's just searching from what's already out yeah, there, isn't it? Of so it's picking. Picking up a pool of shit and then yeah. dissecting it to whatever is for you. So I think we're still good for now. The thing that for does now. scare me though, <laughs> I've, it, it's the voice stuff when you can, you know what I mean? Even from this podcast now, like people could probably take our voices and um, oh my God, call them my mum up and get a, get a couple of quid off my mum. Oh <laughs> you my know what I mean? You don't got any, so you've been fucked, you know? Oh my God. But that is the scary shit. Yeah. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah. Wow. Let's have I've opened up a can of worms there. Let's yeah, let's stop. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> there you go, Sadie. Really it's been great. Thanks for having me on. Thank out. you. It's been and such before a you pleasure. go, so your Instagram is I am Sadie Clayton. I am I am Sadie Clayton. I am I nicked Sadie it Clayton. off Ben the Campbell back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis will drop all these nicely. We have them in. We usually have them all in our hands if we can. We usually put our hands up so we can balance shit in. Um, so, I am Sadie Clayton. Your website is sadieclayton.co.uk or sadieclayton.com. Both sort of works. And the podcast Boom. is coming out this week called Black People Can't Swim. Look out yeah. for that on everywhere that you get your Spotify. Uh, anywhere that you it's get your It's a podcast. myth. It's a myth. It's a myth. They can swim. Um, yeah, Spotify and Apple and, you know, all those whatever streaming pod platforms people use. I'm just an Apple. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. an iPhone, so I'm an Apple, Apple podder. Say no more. All right, say it. Lovely. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you, you too. Good Thanks energy. for having me. Thank you so Have much. Have a good the day. Biggest of love. Biggest of love. Thank you, say love. Bye-bye. How do I leave? Oh, just click that. Shut the lid if you want. <laughs> I was like, she's great, isn't she? <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, it's really good. Really her good. En- that was a really good time. Her, en- her, en- her energy's infectious, bro. Like, fucking, every time I speak to her, I think the first ever time, obviously, we we didn't mean to rush that then, but it was just, say, they only had an hour for everyone listening, so we, did, we didn't mean to kind of, like, overlap and stuff and whatnot. And thingy, but, um, First ever time I met Sadie, I think it was it was at one of Danny's parties, and she bounced in the room with Liam. Um, and Liam, even obviously we've had Liam on the pod, right? So I'm guessing the people have made the connection that Liam and Sadie are a, are a couple of an item. And they were sat in the same place. Yeah, they were. I, I, <laughs> I was trying to work out if they changed the prints. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or not? Um, but they both walk in and like the exuberant 
positivity you get from her. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I always find with someone, it's like what we were talking, and I wanted to start going into it, but again, I was conscious of time. I, I know I, I'm very self-aware of myself when I walk in a room, and I am um, if I'm loud, I can be intimidating. I, if I'm if I'm if from whatever way I'm being, do you know what I mean? I understand I can be a lot, and the older that I've got, I understand how to be a bit more. Um, emotionally intelligent when I walk into this room and adapt to my energies. <laughs> not that you should, you know, but, uh, but not in a negative way or anything, or I, not that I change the way I am or anything, but if it's a room filled with grandmas, hypothetically speaking, they're not going to want me bouncing and going with my, you know what I'm saying? Like, but if it was a when room you do go in. With... That is when you do go in, though, because you love uh, it. It probably is. Yeah. <laughs> it probably is. It probably is. That is when you Maybe do I don't go fucking... You look to make him smile. How are you doing, love? You're right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it can be um, people who don't want it. Like, my, I think my little brother's a good example. Do you know what I mean? Because Callum's not necessarily the most expressive in the way, even the clothes that he'll wear, you know, are like him and himself as a person. And I think someone like Callum sees someone like me or, or like potentially even like someone like Sadie who's really vibrant and stuff like that. It can be deemed as intimidating, lad. Do you know what I mean? It can be deemed as this thing. Do you know what I'm saying? But then, well, like, say this, like, like I was, again, I, that's literally the story I was saying before is like, you know, and as I started saying it, I was like, fucking hell, I feel like a incel right now. I feel like I'm making myself <laughs> really weak and fragile. But, but you know, when, when I when I did first meet you, like, I, I remember like being at uni and we had we had to go and do those fucking, we had to sit in like a proper lecture room sometimes, and you were always like just shouting and talking and. I never really met you before, and I was like, "Who's oh, this dickhead?" Like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, well, well, I mean, yeah, you are, a <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but no, but I know what you're saying. It's, I think that's it, a bit of a different energy because I was a bit more thingy with it. Then I'm a bit, you know, what I'm saying. I've obviously grown a lot since then, but it's it's still the same. It's not diff- There's nothing different. It's just I know a few more big words now. Yeah, and, and like, like you said, it's, it's it's knowing it's knowing when to use it. It's, it's knowing yeah, uh, it is, and not bro. not use it. Like you, I always think like, when do you turn it? When when do you turn it off? Do you just but you, but like I've known you for what like eight or nine years now, and there's no off button. Do you know what I mean? It's just uh, it's yeah. on the button's broken, lad. <laughs> it fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> the turn down button don't work, bro. Um, and 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 Sadie is exactly that, and I think that's why I get along with her so well. Um. And, and and like when I'm with her in her presence, you know what I mean. It's the energy is reciprocated both ways, you know. Like as soon as we sat there and, and we spoke, it's just it's the fact it's just it's yeah, I love it. You know, it's, it's it's fucking you can see the energy, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But people are even really drawn to it, are are really are really kind of like a bit like oh, what do you get? like oh, <laughs> you know like. Um, but regardless, like you were saying, authentically be you, be undeniably you. And if people don't like it, then <laughs> so, so, it sounds like a you problem. You know what, I'm <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? It sounds like a you problem. Um, but yeah, I think that was really good. Like I said, hopefully it didn't, see, it didn't, it didn't seem um, too rushed. And I think there were certain topics that we could have gone a lot more in depth about and, and serious topics too. But I think we, we've even spoke about specifically doing podcasts on... Um, black creators within the industry and why there is such a lack of diversity throughout every agency that we go to. So I think that's a conversation we can keep going on and, and keep trying to, I don't know, potentially if we can, <laughs> I don't know, make something better with it. I don't know, you know, if we can have a little say on it, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, man, another one in the bag. We go again. That that was really good, lad. Sadie, yeah, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to meeting her in person. Like I've not met, and I've not met. Um, Liam it blows as well, my so mind yeah. that that is yeah, fucking. Yeah. It's crazy how the how, it, how the, uh, the how we've just not crossed yet. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, I think that's us. Um, thank you for listening. As always, if you are listening, we're keeping doing them. If you've got any feedback, hit us. If you've got any people we'd like to get on, if you'd like to be on, hit us. Um, obviously, the link's probably here. And here, thanks for what? <laughs> um, the li- like, like, <laughs> like, like. I, like a, I like, I like doing it in a different order. Subscribe, like, and share. Um, tell your mom, tell your grandma to listen. Uh, Ask your mom yeah. what does she think? <laughs> Ask your mom what does she think? Ask her. Yeah, and we're gonna keep moving. Keep moving. That's all we can do, lad.
Thank you, stay everyone. Safe. Keep smashing it. Keep doing shit. Keep playing. Keep fucking being undeniable. Peace.